When is Doctor Who Am I releasing? Did you know the documentary is set to release on a new date? In this video, we will share every detail and latest happenings related to the documentary on Paul McGann. Stay with me till the end to know about everything. Also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more content like this. Firstly, who is Paul McGann? On November 14th, 1959, in Kingsington, Liverpool, England, the United Kingdom, Paul McGann was born. His credits include The Three Musketeers, 1993, with Nail and I, 1987, and Alien. In addition, he is an actor and director, 1992. Since 1992, he has been wed to Annie Milner. They have two youngsters. He is the older brother of Mark McGann and Stephen McGann, and the younger brother of Joe McGann. In Doctor Who, the movie, he succeeded Sylvester McCoy as the Eighth Doctor, 1996. Unfortunately, the movie was unsuccessful in reviving Doctor Who 1963 as a running series. Despite being rated a success in the UK, it failed in the US. Nevertheless, because many liked his portrayal, he later played the part again in Audio Adventures. Up next, when will the documentary be released? The UK release of Doctor Who Am I, a forthcoming documentary that examines the legacy of the 1996 Doctor Who TV movie, starring Paul McGann, has been postponed, but not by much. The movie was initially scheduled to open in theaters on Thursday, October 13th, before going on sale in DVD and digital formats the following Monday, November 7th. As a result, the movie will now make its UK premiere on Thursday, October 27th. It will be released on Blu-ray, DVD, and digital download on November 28th. Kaleidoscope Film bought the Doctor Who documentary, Doctor Who Am I, following the 1996 Doctor Who TV production and broadcast. The movie was slated to hit theaters in the UK in October. The documentary was to be shown at the Toronto International Film Festival. So what is there to know about Doctor Who? Following a lengthy hiatus in 1989, the Doctor Who movie made its broadcast debut in 1996. However, after receiving harsh criticism, the show was ultimately cancelled until 2005, when it was revived. As he reluctantly visits the film's development and the reception it received upon release, writer Matthew Jacobs will be seen in the movie. The film, which starred Paul McGann from Withnail, chronicled the regeneration of the Seventh Doctor into his next face. It was initially meant to serve as the pilot episode for an American-produced revival of the program, which had not had any episodes air in six years. The movie is set in America rather than England, despite being a classic Doctor versus the Master scenario. Unfortunately, the Americanization of the adored sci-fi series did not go over well with audiences. Up next, what do the filmmakers have to say about it? When discussing their collaboration with the filmmaker Vanessa Yule and Jacobs, Kaleidoscope CEO Spencer Pollard said, Working on this fantastic film with Matthew and Vanessa makes us at Kaleidoscope very happy. It is a genuine fan piece. We hope other festivals and distributors like it as much as we did. Regarding Kaleidoscope's participation, Yule noted that Kaleidoscope saw right away that we are a tiny film with great heart. Working with Kaleidoscope is a great match for us because, while being an American production, they are familiar with the Doctor Who franchise and the fandom's international appeal. As a result, they could transport our documentary into the Hooniverse. Jacobs also contributed his remarks about the significance of the movie. Now more than ever, we need a positive film about Doctor Who fandom as we move towards the show's 60th anniversary. We're so excited that Kaleidoscope, as audiences have, recognizes that our documentary is essential viewing for all lovers of storytelling. With Jacobs assisting her, Yule makes her directional debut with Doctor Who Am I, along with other members of the original cast, such as Eric Roberts and Daphne Ashbrook. McGann will be highlighted in the documentary. Jacobs, Yule, and American Anorex serve as producers. Coming right up, do you want to have a small synopsis? Vanessa Yule, a documentary filmmaker, follows Matthew Jacobs, a British writer. They wrote the 1996 TV movie Doctor Who. As he is reluctantly drawn back to the fan base that rejected his work 25 years earlier, this is the first feature-length documentary. The voyage not only turns amusing and emotionally dangerous for the two, but also displays a sweet and odd 
confrontation between Matthew and the American Doctor Who fans. As they learn more about the fanbase, Matthew unintentionally discovers that he belongs to this large, tight-knit fam family. The documentary explores the urge to fit in with a group of people and the benefits that might come from doing so. From the teaser, it appears that the 80-minute movie provides intimate insight into how the TV movie was written. Paul McGann, Daphne Ashbrook, and many costume American supporters are also included. According to Sci-Fi London, Matthew Jacobs and Vanessa Yule will be at the screening. Next up, where is the movie being screened? And what about the cast? The movie has a 7.30 p.m. start time at the View Theatres in England, Scotland, and Wales. There are 11 locations where the movie is being screened. Bass and Stokes Festival Place, Bedford, Bolton's Cribs, Causeway, Cardiff, Edinburgh's Omni Center, Leeds the Light, London's Westfield, Shepherd's Bush, Manchester Printworks, Plymouth, Portsmouth, and Swansea. If you cannot attend the viewing, you can pre-order the movie on DVD, Blu-ray, and digital download. The potential cast of Doctor Who Am I include Daphne Ashbrook, Nicholas Briggs, May Carters, Ken Deep, Matthew Jacobs, Paul McGann, Eliza Roberts, Eric Roberts, Paul Salama, Philip David Siegel, and Vanessa Yule. Coming up, did Leonard Nimoy want to direct the Doctor Who movie? The first season of Doctor Who ended in 1989, after seven Doctor incarnations since 1963. There was a one-off TV movie in 1996 with Paul McGann as the eighth Doctor before the series was successfully rebooted in 2005. This was supposed to be a backdoor pilot to start a series, but it turned out to be a false start that didn't take off. And since then, both the TV movie and McGann's portrayal of the Doctor have become increasingly well-known and have developed a small but devoted fan base. Since then, McGann has performed the part in several audio dramas. In addition, he co-starred with John Hurt in the 2013 episode, The Night Doctor. Surprisingly, it has come to light that Leonard Nimoy, who played Spock, expressed interest in directing the 1996 TV movie, in which McGann starred. Producer Philip Seagal told the Radio Times that he met with Leonard Nimoy multiple times about directing the show. We had great chats when I met him at Amblin Entertainment. He was sincere in his excitement at the potential. Why then did it not occur? Fox opposed him doing it. They were worried that saying, aren't we clever, be terribly cheesy. Spock from Star Trek is in charge of the direction? Seagal said that the US broadcaster for the TV movie demanded that Nimoy play a part in it, possibly as the master. That was really offensive to Leonard because that wasn't the object of the exercise, Seagal said. In addition to the two Star Trek movies, Nimoy was the director of the comedy Three Men and a Baby, which had the highest box office performance in 1987. Star Trek and Doctor Who are currently set in a completely different age, with Discovery, Picard Lower Decks, and Strange New Worlds. Star Trek is now in a highly productive phase. In addition, Doctor Who, who will celebrate its 60th anniversary in 2023 and will soon see the departure of the 13th Doctor, Jodie Whittaker, in favor of the 14th, Shuti Gatwa. Lastly, what details have Doctor Who producers recently shared about the secret series? There are many unfinished episodes and unfinished stories with Doctor Who. Still, some viewers might not be aware that the 1996 TV movie producer, Philip Seagal's script for a Hooniverse came very near to being realized. Seagal stated that he had a whole book of ideas for what may have happened if the TV movie had been taken up for an entire series. In an interview with RadioTimes.com, before the debut of the new documentary Doctor Who Am I on the legacy of the film. Together with Richard Lewis and Peter Wagg from Max Headroom, we created a 75-page series Bible, which was leather-bound and inscribed with the seal of Rassilon. It's pretty thorough, he recalled. Cardinal Barusa, who was well known to classic fans for appearances in The Deadly Assassin and The Invasion of Time wrote a series of journal entries for the Bible titled The Chronicles of Doctor Who from his point of view. The Bible seemed to begin Seagal's interpretation of Doctor Who with the political conflict between the Doctor and the Master of Gallifrey, with the former being driven from the planet and sent wandering the wastelands in pursuit of the Tomb of Rassilon. One of the theories that came closest to the original mythos of the show was that the Doctor would eventually have departed Gallifrey by stealing a Type 40 TARDIS, with the revelation that the Master and the Doctor are half-brothers and the Doctor's primary goal is finding his father, Ulysses, whom he believes is still alive somewhere in the universe. There is a significant emphasis on family throughout
out Seagal's Bible. And there you have it, everything you need to know about the Doctor Who film. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more similar content. Thanks for watching. Goodbye!